Okay. 100 years ago today, at the 11th hour, y'all realize that? It's exactly 100 years ago today, they signed the peace agreement to end World War I, 1918. I believe my math is right, but I hadn't seen any, the media mentioning the 100th anniversary at all. Have y'all anywhere? Well, if my math is right, <laughs> that's 100 years. They signed a, an agreement to end the war, didn't they? They ended when another one started out a few years later called World War II. And many wars were fought during that time in other countries. It is Veterans Day that we're honoring. Uh, and I wonder today how many veterans, anybody that served in, uh, been in service or still in service, would y'all stand please? But Brian, aren't you in service? All right, anybody else? Nobody else will admit to it, will they? Well, folks, we want to thank y'all for your service to this country uh, in a great way. Don't think you're taken for granted, but we appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hear, I had a habit of bailing out with these two guys for a good bit. We go out for breakfast and when they'd run into a law officer, they'd always stop and thank them for their service. When they lay their life down, basically that's what they do. They're, they're, they're gambling with their life. And folk, there's a lot of people that have given their life for this great country in which we live. Why do you think those people from Honduras and South America are trying to come up now in a caravan? Because they see what this part of the world enjoys. Uh, I don't see many people going hungry. And we got a guy living out on the porch of the church. I don't know if y'all seen him, but if you cut your, if you cut your lights on, uh, they cut the cameras on early in the morning, you'll see him, he'll have breakfast every morning out here on the steps. He picks his stuff up, we watch him carefully. But when it starts getting daybreak, he gathers his stuff and puts it in the bag and down across the street in front of us, Spring Valley. So if you see him up here, I don't know of a thing he's hurting. I watched him, but. <laughs> came up here one morning early and there was a man out there waiting on a ride. Word. I ain't never seen him. But Della says she's seen this guy. Yeah. You see the guy on the steps? Yeah. Well, he was laying sleeping on that hard concrete out there. But anyway, uh, I kind of drifted away from my main thought, but this great country that our soldiers have fought and died for and continue to do so. Uh, and let's be grateful and don't take it for granted what's happened. But anyway, we're going to honor our veterans today and we've, I've chosen these scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. This was Apostle Paul as he wrote his uh, younger brother in the ministry, Timothy. Verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick or the live and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, don't forget this, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And then Paul concluded his writings, and they say this was the last letter that he wrote while he was in prison before they put him to death. 
For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And folk, if you know the Lord, that includes you. We look forward to his appearing, do we not? But at the 11th hour of the 11th day, the 11th month, we had our first armistice day. They celebrated, we actually celebrate what occurred on that day 100 years ago. But World War I was symbolically declared to be over. And since uh, we celebrate all the wars, all of them were included later on down through the years. To bring to honor or to, to remember the folk that have fought and died for this country and are still continue to fight. Our men and women deserve to be honored. I told Brother Bobby this morning, I've got a, he got a little like Titac, and I told him I wore it in his honor today because I felt like he'd be here. But uh, it says U.S. Army on it. And folk, I'm not, not misleading. I didn't serve in the U.S. Army. I'm wearing this to honor these uh, soldiers that did. Because they paid a price. But since the beginning, the world has battled with other powers. Since the very beginning. We go way back to the first home on this earth. The first person ever born by the natural childbirth was named Cain. And he had a younger brother named Abel. We read the story of what happened when they brought an offering before the Lord. And God honored the offering that Abel made because it pictured what Jesus was going to do on the cross when he brought in the bloody lamb that had been slain. Cain said, God, look what I've done for you. And Abel said, God, look what you're going to do for me in giving of your lamb, even the Son of God, for our sins. And because of this incident, Cain rose up against his own brother and murdered him. His own playmate, his only brother at the time. And the Lord started over with Seth, didn't he? But Satan was in the garden. And he's behind all of it. He enticed man to sin. And every man since Adam and Eve had been a sinner but one. And he was born different than you and I was. He was born of a virgin. The seed of the woman. You and I are the seed of man. But he was the seed of woman. Even Mother Eve. But I've just read to you about the battle that the Apostle Paul said that he was fighting. And he was talking about a spiritual battle. And whether you like it or not, we are all in a spiritual battle. There's good spirits and there are bad spirits. It began with Satan way back under. When he was cast out of the heavens. And he said they proclaimed himself, I'm going to be like God. I'm going to take his place. Lucifer, the bright morning star, he's called. The author of deception. And John 8, 44 said he's a father of liars and the truth is not in him. Satan knows how to uh, 
paint things up, doesn't he? But it all ends in a lie. But Paul fought this battle. Look at verse 7. We read a moment ago. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I've kept the faith. Now let me hasten to tell you that that good fight, that's an adjective <coughs> describing the fight. It's not an adverb describing how that Paul fought it, but he was talking about the good fight that he fought for. He didn't. Paul wasn't boasting him. He wasn't patting himself on the back and said, "I've done a good job." He said, "I fought a good. The fight was good. The good cause." The apostle Paul met the Lord on the road to Damascus, didn't he? And he, <laughs> Paul fell down before the Lord and he said, Who art thou, Lord? The Lord told him, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Paul had scales on his eyes and the Lord blinded him. And he turned his life over to the Lord that day. And he fought the fight the rest of his life till he was put to death because of the fight. He described some of the perils of the battle that he fought. But we'll look back at verse 3. And y'all take this in real good. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Shall we say the time has come? But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. Now who's the truth? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But they shall turn their ears away from the truth and they shall be turned unto fables. Or if you will, a fairy tale. Time has come when people don't want to hear the truth. A lot of people don't want to come to church because they're afraid their toes are going to get stepped on. They always told me, if you don't want them stepped on, get them out of the way. <laughs> Before we live in a sad day, these Fellas that go out and knock on doors on Sunday afternoon and any other day they can during the week. They don't always go just Sunday. They go Saturdays and other times. And they, because, they go because they love souls. And they love the good fight. Now, a lot of people don't want to hear that they're a sinner. Somebody come to my house, knock on my door, say, hey, sinner. <laughs> Basically, guess what they're doing? But they're trying to lead them to the Lord. There's hope, isn't there, for the sinner? We get a picture here. Sunday afternoons, uh, people sports-minded, they're home watching the ball game, somebody come knock on the door. Somebody won't tell you you're a sinner, but the best part about it, they won't tell you how to get saved from that sin. I won't tell you about Jesus. And they use Jesus' name in the right way. It's not always done that way, is it? These guys that ride the bicycles and wear a white shirt and tie, most of them, they carry what they call the Book of Mormons. And it mentions the name of Jesus, but in no fashion other than what the Bible teaches Jesus. Right. I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. The Bible is God's written word. Amen. And the scripture said, let no man add unto the word to this book. Neither shall any man take away from the word to this book. 
Oh, God said it. And that's final, isn't it? Pastor, I had when I, 50 some odd years ago when I surrendered to the ministry, he had a favorite saying he liked to say. He said, I believe it. He said, God said it. I believe it. And that ends it. But let me tell you something. It really ends before you believe it. God said it, and that ends it. Think about it a moment. Whether we believe it or not, because a lot of people don't believe in the Word of God. But if God said it, that's final, isn't it? But a time will come, as Scripture says, when they'll not hear the truth. And that time been here. But we continue the battle that the Apostle Paul fought. Every Christian is in the middle of that fight. And folks, I've got to warn you again. Look at verse 5. He says, But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Now, he said, watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Those afflictions are going to come. And our Lord tells us before that last day comes that we shall be delivered up for the powers of this earth. And many of us shall be put to death. But we continue the battle that was begun a long time ago. It's a battle for the souls of men. And folk, that makes a battle worthwhile. We are an eternal creature. We're going to be somewhere forever, either with the Lord or away from the Lord. Can't be in between, can you? Verse 6, if you will, Paul said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He could say that he had fought a good fight, that he had kept the faith. Are we going to be able to say the same thing? That we fought a good fight. Well, the fight's good, that settles it. But how about us? Have we kept the faith? I hope we will. Because the scripture says we all going to answer, aren't we? Sometimes we don't realize the value of life itself. All too often we take things for granted, but folk, life is a precious commodity. That the Lord gives to everyone as he sees fit. But we're going to have to answer to, as to what kind of stewards we've been over this life. But verse 8 says, the last verse, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. Not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Folks, that means the Lord got something special in store for us. It's called a crown of righteousness here. To all that love his appearing, we shall receive, the scripture says, a crown of glory that fadeth not away. What we see things today, nothing on this earth is permanent. Nothing. It's all temporary. Look at California, and they're showing. They're just burning a whole one old town down, a place called Paradise, California. Every material thing inside is being melted with heat. And some 23 lives, the last report I heard, uh, People have lost their lives. 
But folk, we're going to receive a crown of glory. I got to think about an old song. I used to sing some and try to sing it at church. I wouldn't listen to the lyrics of the song as close as I ought to have been. But the song is called The Last Mile of the Way. I shall see the great king in his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. But the rest of that first part of that song says, If I walk in the pathway of duty, no matter whether we're walking or not, it's, <laughs> either we're going to be with the Lord or not, it, but it really the song teaches work for salvation. Right. It said, If I work to the close of the day, we ought to work for the Lord, but not in order to get, but because we have. Amen. Does that make sense? Not in order to attain life, because the Lord gave us life, didn't we? Brother Enrique brought us a wonderful Sunday school lesson this morning in John 10, which expounds that the fact the Lord does give us life. And when He wraps around us, we can't get away because we're sealed by the seal of God. And that's the promise we have. All right. We talked about veterans today, but moreover, I wanted to talk to you about Jesus and what he did for you.